And just like that, we live. We live. Make sure I share this. What's that thing? Before we even get started, let folks come on in. How's everybody doing? Officially official. Yep. There we go. That's what I want to do. I got an extra shiny head on this one, man. Oh. Look like a Christmas one. Oh. Yeah. Just friend requests, bro. You famous, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they be on us. We finna find your man tonight. What the hell you <laughs> doing? <laughs> we finna find your man on this order call. Say, no, I just came to chill. I feel you. Good. I just came here to all right, chill. Alright, alright. This is this for the Conduct. We are live in the building, episode 26. I'm hyped up. I got my brother here with me. As always, DJ Harlem James is in the building, everybody. Amen. Also, <laughs> my special, special guest. This whole episode is basically dedicated to her life. So she's on here, y'all. Put, put it out there. Share her story. I want y'all to give it up for Miss Milana Sanders. It's in the building. Miss Milana Marie. Hey, Marie. Marie, we I thank you first of all. I know my brother thanks you for for dedicating your time and energy because we're not paying you no money. <laughs> <laughs> we broke. Uh, we <laughs> and chill with us and tell your story tonight. Um, definitely, you've been a, a number one supporter of mine. A friend of mine that has definitely shown me since day one that you are dedicated to me and what we do at this only conduct, and I appreciate you. So I'm giving this love right back to you. I got the motivational speaker. We're gonna speak it into existence, right? All right. All right. Uh, the motivational <laughs> speaker, Miss Luana Sanders, in the building. Uh, we are getting into it. Uh, this week, y'all. This only conduct episode 26. First of all. I sent y'all this whole video, right, of a um, a situation with a young lady and her son. It was off this reality show called Black Ink Crew. Yeah. Um, where the the young man basically he uh, blew up at his at his mom because the mom he hasn't seen his mom in, he said fifteen years. Mm -hmm. And I asked y'all basically, um, how did you feel about? That whole video situation, and I would like for you to to say how you feel right now, live on the podcast, live. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> hey, um, I cannot blame that young man for feeling how he feel, bro. Like, it's a uh, that's a. Uh, I'm not sure how I would feel, knowing that I have not seen my mother for 15 years, and then all of a sudden, I don't know if they had communication before. I don't even watch the show. Like, right. Not, right. I don't... I wanted to show y'all that just because <laughs> I know a lot of people don't watch that show, but for some reason, that, that hit it. me, and I wanted to and I touch see, on that. I, the fact that you, you've been gone 15 years, man, and all of a sudden, I'm starting to see you on the TV screen, whatever, whatever, and meeting face-to-face -face like that, 
it was definitely a lot of emotion. It was going to be tears one way or the other, whether they got into it or whether they were just speaking. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a whole lot to take in. I don't blame that young man for blowing up because I haven't seen you in that long, but I can turn on my TV at a certain time and watch you on there and doing whatever the fuck you do. Like I said, I don't watch this show. I don't watch the exactly. the, the rest of TVs, whatever TV show. <laughs> I don't I do not do that. I be watching PBS. So... <laughs> Or, you know, I, I be watching uh, uh, Bob Ross get his paint on, everything like that, man. So I, I can't blame him for being upset, man. Like, that's to know that somebody out here made you and they still walking around and you haven't seen them. Or, and he was 15. You need all the emotional support you can, mother and father from whoever is around you, bro. And to, to have to deal with something like that at that age, that young, I don't blame him. He tore up a lot of stuff in that <laughs> restaurant, yeah, but he tore up everything in there. I'm not mad at him, man. I wish it would have been handled better. I wish they would have... Everything not for TV. Exactly. Everything That's is... That's exactly... Especially something like that ain't for TV. My man. point. Before we get in, before I get into that, I want to give a couple of shout-outs to everybody that's tuned in right now. Um... We officially got 31 people tuned in right now. I need all 31 of y'all to subscribe to the this Orly Conduct fan page right now. Hit that like button. Hit that share button so you can get this quality content every week, man. We do this live every Friday, 7.30-ish. Ish. <laughs> we not starting on time because we have technical difficulties. Every time. <laughs> every time. Or uh, uh, just sometimes I'm behind. That's, I'm going to just tell the truth. I ain't going to lie to my people. Hey, that's why I put the ish on there. So y'all know what it is. Uh, I totally agree with you when you said that... Um, some things you just shouldn't put on TV. That was my whole thing. Like, if you're going to do something like that, I felt what she was saying. Like, yeah, I felt her pain. I like, saying. I felt what she was saying. I felt that that was the one moment where she was keeping it real on a reality show or whatever when, when that happened. But it's some things you shouldn't keep on the, the, the television. Some like, that conversation, too real for you just yeah. had that. That's, you ain't seen your son in 15 years yeah. and he mad like that. You definitely had that conversation. Um... By yourselves. Mr. Ron Marie, go on, hop in here. How you feel about this? I mean, for me, you know, every situation is different, you know, and every person handles situations different. And for him, you know, to have an absent parent for that long, you know, there could have been a reason why, but she had to understand the fact that, you know, he basically has bottled all of this anger inside for that long, and then here she comes on TV apologizing and wanting to be there. But it's not an instant gratification of, I'm sorry, I want to be your mother again, because she left. And so the thing with him is he probably never really, you know, expressed how he felt that whole time. And now he's reacting out of anger. That's that's the problem in this society is that, you know, we don't understand the effect of missing parents and things like Man. that. You know, because as time passes, it's a seed that's planted, whether it's a good or a bad one. And... For someone not to be there and instantly come back in your life, they're wanting that relationship. But for you, you're more like, hey, let's be friends first and see what we can develop. And you could tell that he was mad. I mean, at the same time, he obviously cared because if he didn't, he wouldn't right. show up. Right. But he didn't know how to express, so he expressed the only way that he basically had been doing for 15 years, which was in anger. And, uh, you know, I mean... Like I said, you don't really know how to handle things like that. And again, she could have had a good reason. But I don't, from what I saw, she was wrong. And maybe, you know, apologizing could have developed something later. But, you know, yeah, it's crazy. I'm sorry. Forget these uh, instances that happen. <laughs> I'm over here trying to yeah, do I'm too much. Nervous, listen, now. don't. Come on. <laughs> but listen, we're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it 100. Miss Milano was nervous today. And yeah, I understand your nervous because you are putting your life out here for everybody to see, everybody to judge or whatever. But honestly, you are speaking your truth today, and I want to make sure we take good care of you. Um, I want to get into a few more things before we hop into all your personal business. Going to just keep <laughs> loosening you on up in here. I felt like you was getting there because we went in on that one. Uh, that's why I brought you on here. I, I know that you 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 gonna express 
your opinion. <laughs> and I'm gonna get it together over here. <laughs> One way or another. I'm trying to read the comments, y'all. Y'all know. Y'all don't what's understand going on. how much technology we need <laughs> at one time. I'm gonna make sure I get everybody that's tuned in. Name your name. I got a lot of women that have subscribed to the page right now. Miss Ashton has subscribed. Mrs. Turner has just subscribed. Robbie Ray has subscribed. Hey. Tamika Gilbert has This is all right now, my brother. Like, oh. We're going to have like seven to eight people subscribe. And I think it's because Miss Milana is on the episode. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, Milana has challenged me <laughs> <laughs> to basically do a, a episode where I do not curse. We're going to keep it clean. And y'all know me. I named the show Disorderly Conduct. <laughs> <laughs> and now you got to have conduct. You know, but like she she gave me, she hit me with a line where, where she said, basically, um, I, I told her, I said, it's an hour show. You know, you can, it's going to be all right. You know, it's not going to mess up your, your image or anything. She was like, you're right. It's an hour show. You ain't got to curse. And I was like. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I can't even disagree with you on that. Well, so, just for you, we doing a whole podcast with no curses. Woo! I'm going to try my best. Yeah. <laughs> I promise I'm going to try my best. If I slip up, please don't hold it against me. I am not cursing to disrespect you. I promise you. I, I have the utmost <laughs> respect for my lady over here. Um, Make sure you go check out the website, man. www. Disorderlyconduct.com. Dot com. Make sure you go there. You can find the, the latest episodes of the podcast. You can find information about me and DJ Harlem J. Yeah. Uh, the website is a is a work in progress, but you better believe that uh, the work that I'm putting in, man, that all this is going to pay off. First of all, before I go any further, since we got all these people tuned in, let's get to these shirts. Oh man, <laughs> I have the black. And white man listen shirts. Uh, our, our, the man listen shirts come from basically, uh, you hear me say man listen a lot during the podcast or, or man hear me and, and, and we turn that into a segment on the radio. Uh, at Streets 101, you can catch that at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the Corporate Hustle, our segment, the man listen moment of the week. <laughs> hey, I got a plug, plug, plug. Plug it in. I'm paying for all this. Make that man listen. <laughs> I got my Speak Life shirt over here. Uh, basically, what the Speak Life shirt means, y'all. Basically, I'm gonna get on the side. See, Speak Life basically means I want to be able when I, when I speak to y'all or I talk to y'all, and when you out here in the world or you out here speaking to somebody, you speaking life into them, you speaking positivity, you encouraging somebody because every day we all need it. I know I struggle days with trying to stay positive, being a positive person, being a positive guy. And I want to put this message out here that basically says speak life. And I got, you know, the the, the, the heart rate monitor over there because you, you speak life. The words you speak and everything you put out here, man, it, it, it matters. It matters how you speak. It matters how you think because how you think and how you feel about yourself, man, is how you're going to portray out here in the world. Hold hey. on. You can get this red and white. <laughs> it's man, Christmas listen, edition, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. You can get the man listening in the white. You can get the, the, the speak life in the black and white. Hey. Kim, can you see the back so you can see how they All write right, it on the back? Yeah, let me make sure we get the back. You got the disorderly kind of entertainment on the back. Make sure we, we, we get that on there. It's hey. still time before Christmas. It's still get time. One of these, we got the Black Friday deal still going on. <laughs> <laughs> you can get one for 20 or two for 40. That's the deal. Hey. We got up and here on this Friday. Uh, Miss Mullen, I hope I got you loose over here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I got you loose over here because we're moving and grooving. Um, I got this segment where it's called Say What's Real. I'm trying out some new stuff tonight, y'all. So I'm trying to get these segments together so we can put together a real show. You know, so we can have a real show every week. Everybody expect the segment, all that good stuff. So we got the Say What's Real segment where we just go around and say what happened to this week to us that was real. Or something that happened or whatever. My my situation this week, man, was was basically what well, wasn't even a situation. I see a lot of people in twenty, I guess, seventeen ish ending are into this whole. I, my girl got a girlfriend. Uh, I gotta have two girls. This whole. 
No, I'm not saying yo, well, my way is the right way or your way is the right way, but what do y'all think this whole obsession is coming from with I got to have two girlfriends or I got to have two women or two things like that because I'm not really understanding where this is just popping up out of nowhere because I don't think, or maybe I'm just not paying attention because I'm I'm following more people on Facebook now. <laughs> That's what it is. Follow a lot more people who express a lot more different opinions than what I see in I'm open to stuff, but, you know, certain things I, 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 I question, you know, so I ask y'all, what do y'all think the, the, this whole polygamy, basically, outbreak is coming from in 2017? I, let me get, so, directly can hear me, I think, I think it's been around, a lot of things is being accepted in our society now are things that were used to be kept under the rug. Like, man, people been having affairs in other families and things like that for a while. I just think we just well, long time. we just live in a time now where it's on front street. And so they cool? The ladies are... Uh, Malone. Mm -mm. No, you, you're only going to accept what you Malone, accept. Malone, you a single woman out here? I know it. Mm -hmm. Are the women settling for being side chicks nowadays? A lot of them are, because... Most people don't know the worth, number one. And then two, you know, the motive of these relationships and things like that is really no longer focused on love. It's more about, you know, how much money you got? What can you buy me? You know, can you pay my bills? Can you do this? And so people don't really care if they got a title or not. You know, they, they don't really care about themselves and they don't respect themselves. So as long as you taking care of me, I'll be your side, whatever. That's how people think, Ooh, yeah, you yeah. know. But for me, oh. I, will, I I can't be no side of nothing. I got to be the main if I'm going to be. The main. You know, because at the end of the day, for a relationship for me, you know, I can pay my own bills. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you're looking for someone that's real, someone that can respect you, someone that's loyal, someone... You know, that it's all about the heart. It's not about the physical. It's more, if you connect with someone mentally and not physically, you'll have something that will last. But most people, they want what's on the outside or what's in the pocket, you know. And, of course, you know, that means you build yourself for anything. Do, we, do you agree? Do you disagree? I, I agree, but I'll also say this. Some people cool with that. Some people, some people can deal. Some people, cool some people with can it. deal with having, I say, multiple partners, multiple partnerships in a relationship. I don't. <laughs> I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that everybody should. I'm just saying if y'all how you know how hard it is dealing with one of y'all. On a regular, everyday I'm going to bash women now. No, it's not, no, no, I'm not bashing. <laughs> I'm not bashing. Just, I'm just saying. To deal with one woman is uh, enough for me to try to balance two of y'all at one time. It also depends on the woman too. It's a lot and of somebody gonna a be lot feeling of variables in that. Somebody's gonna always feel like they gotta have the the the, the title, the, the main title. title. Yeah. Somebody's gonna always feel some kind of way. So I don't even want to. That's too much pressure. <laughs> that's too much pressure. That's too much. I want to shout out a few more people. Miss LaShonda Fart is tuned in. Thank you, Miss LaShonda Fart, for tuning in. Mr. Sheldon Fortenberry yeah. is tuned in. Miss Rachel Goff just tuned in. Hey, Miss Rachel, how you doing? Uh, let me get to some of these comments. Got Mr. Sheldon saying right on. Mr. Robbie Ray saying I have to support my alumni class of 2008. Yeah, Robbie, man. Shout out. Uh, Mr. Leland is saying great points. Michael McBride is tuned in. Said this orderly. Hey, we're going to get Mike on this whole remix, brother. Um, I already talked to him. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a remix coming out to the intro uh, here shortly. We've been, I, I'm always doing something, man. You got to. Listen, the intro don't have your name in it. You know, and I honestly, <laughs> I don't want to feel good about it. I, I don't know if you feel some kind of way, but I would feel some kind of way. If my name wasn't in the intro, so yes. I want my brother's name... To be on the intro, to be involved in the show. I didn't even realize that. Right now, man. Because you, you, man, you, you a part of this. If my name going to be on it, I told you, your name going to be on it. And we going to build. That's the whole point. Um, I ain't got no more comments. Hey, y'all got some comments. Anything you want to say about what we're talking about, let us know. I'm trying to get to, to, to 2000 live. 
views tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're gonna do it. It's a rainy night in Arkansas. I don't know where everybody is listening from. Hey, if you tuned in right now, I got 21 of y'all, 23 of y'all that's tuned in right now, put where you're from in the comments so I can find out where everybody's from. We're going to shout everybody out. We got people that listen in California. Mm -hmm. We got people that listen in Florida. We got people that listen in uh, uh, the Middle East. Afghanistan, man. In Afghanistan, man. <laughs> we got the one white girl in Australia. I don't know her. I need to know these people. Yeah, we got to find out this like, way, man. They, 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 they still support. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know this. Put where you're from in the comments so we can shout you out. Where you're from, where you're tuning in at, because we appreciate you, man, taking your time out, your night, your Friday night, and uh, and, and tuning in to this sort of conduct. Listen, I put a lot of effort and work into to, to jumping this off, making sure this jumps off. So I appreciate y'all coming through, like dedicating y'all time to this, because it means more than y'all know. So, uh, Miss Miranda Canada Harris says. Have to support my friend Milana. Hey, shout out to those real friends that's in the building tonight. We appreciate you. Um, make sure we get back to the show. Milana, we're gonna hop into you. You ready for this? You ready for this? You ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do this. Yeah. I want you to introduce yourself. Like, I know um maybe some new people that just tuned in who really don't know what we what's the point of this episode. But the point of this episode is the life of a single parent. I am casting a light on a special woman over here who I've seen grow and, and be determined to not let her situation just determine her life, but change her life and, and, and get on her grind and grind it out. And to witness that is, I'm, I'm definitely proud of that. So tell the people your name, tell them where you're from, we're gonna hop into it. All right, my name is Milana Sanders. I'm from Benton, Arkansas. Um, I have a four-year-old son, uh, and of course I'm divorced now. Um, pretty much with that is, you know, every person that considers themselves a single parent, whether you're a mother, whether you're a single father, it's, you, you really never see some of those, you know, because some people, every, every situation is different. You know, some people, they get married and it doesn't work, some people get raped and end up with a child. You know, some people are never married and, you know, the person just wants to leave or you got people that are addicted to drugs or in the street life, you know. And so for, for me, for a long time, I depended on the fact of being married. I, I didn't ever want my child to see what I saw coming up. And, but again, you, you, you don't really see these things through. I would have never saw myself at this point divorced, raising a child alone. But when things happen, you just adapt to that life. You know, you just get in a place to where, okay, nothing will change me from being a mother. And that's my thing. Like, I do what I can because at the end of the day, my son will still never feel what I feel in hopes, you know, um, my main thing is this. I'm going to say this. It can make some people mad. Speak it. <laughs> at the end of the day, I know this. I'm mature enough to understand that I'm a woman and I'm a mother. I will never, ever be able to instill in my son what a man can. But what can you do if the man is not there? So for mm -hmm. me, it's not about forcing anyone to be there, forcing anyone to be a father you got to kind of move with life. And so my thing is, even if I have a, a, a friend's husband or a, friend, a male friend, a family member, I still have male role models in my son's life. Because at the end of the day, I know I still can't put in him what a man can. And, you know, my thing is still even with taking care of him. Like, I'm going to touch on child support for a minute. People think that child support can raise a kid, but it really can't. Because if you think about it from a kid's perspective, a kid doesn't see bills. He doesn't know numbers. He doesn't know money. He doesn't know dollars, hundreds, thousands, none of that. All he knows is love. He knows time. He knows toys, fun. So my thing is this. People think because they do one part, they're doing everything. You know, but they're not, you know, so I mean, my thing is, it's, it's a big portion in being a parent, and you learn how to give up you for them, 
You know, my son means everything to me, and I will never allow anything to interfere with that. That's why I work so hard. Like, you know, in the beginning of it, I was so scared to do it. because that's why I, I fought so hard for a marriage that was unhealthy. Because I was saying, well, what if, you know, he's damaged because there's not a mom and a dad in the home? Or what if I can't financially afford to take care of him? Because at first I couldn't. You know, we made good money together, but he made more than I did. So I kept fighting for something that wasn't going to work because I was scared. But then eventually I got to a point to where I said, you know what? I'll just figure out how to make a way because there's no reason to, you know, because I was not only putting myself or him in a bad position. I was putting my son in an unhealthy environment. And so once I got out, I said, okay, now I'm, I'm juggling, I'm Googling things, trying to figure out, okay, what can I do? You know, and now it's like I'm at a place where I make way more money than I did when I first divorced. You know, I got another house that I'm working on getting, you know, residual income. So there's always ways to make it happen. And one of my biggest things was this. We get, when I first started going through this, I started budgeting money. You know, I started changing you know, the way we live to adjust from two incomes to one. And so, you know, of course it wasn't easy, you know, and I had debt from the marriage and all that. But at this point, two and a half years later, I've settled a lot of that debt out. Uh, I cook a lot more, so, you know, I don't have to spend money on, you know. She can cook, fellas. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, you know, but I put a lot more, you know, money in my pocket by trying to adjust to being a single mother. But my son is still well dressed. My son has toys. We go on trips, and and I'm gonna say this: last year, you know, I took him on a trip, but I had to use a lot of credit. So my goal for 2017 was to take him on a trip, and only use my money. And so even though you know I I have to budget, you know I have to do all of that, I was able to pay for a hotel for a whole week, and take what I did was I took money out of my account. I put all the cash in my pocket. And I said, we're going to go down here, we're going to go to the beach, we're going to eat what we want, we're going to buy what we want, we're going to have fun. And we did just that. I wasn't in debt after it, you know, none of that. And the thing with being a single mom, don't get so overwhelmed with what you have to do or what you don't, you know, what you can't do. You know, because if you get so caught up in the stress of it, you won't have fun. And that's why I try to show my son that there's more than Arkansas. There's more than, you know, doing this or doing that. There's a lot of possibilities out here. And it's my job to show him that, you know, not to live in fear of the what ifs, but to just step out there and say, you know what, son, regardless of what my life has thrown me, I was able to overcome it. So that's that's a little bit of where I come from, why I do what I do, and yeah. Uh, you touched on a lot, right? Yeah, that was that's a whole different perspective. I was not. I'm so used I'm to saying, you. yeah. I'm so glad that you're here and said it like that because it's a lot of women that feel like that can't be done as far as you know. what I'm saying being on your own and handling your business. I that takes a lot, and I I salute you for that, man. That takes a whole lot to you know. what I'm saying raise a child, do it by yourself, and just having to to that's a whole lot to to. To take in and have to deal with, not even deal with, just to process in a way that I always applaud mothers because no matter what, y'all gonna put babies first. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, you can have nothing and the child gonna have everything, man. I salute y'all 100% on that. That is a great perspective. I'm so glad you came so people can hear this on this orderly conduct, man. You can do it, it can definitely be done, man. It can definitely be done. I want to shout out everybody that's tuned in one more time. Where you from? Rachel Goff is tuned in from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Hey. In the building up there celebrating for the holidays. Mr. Sheldon Fortenberry is tuned in from Houston, Texas. Shout out to Texas. Uh, down there drinking on some of that uh, cough syrup. Yeah. Sir. We don't promote drugs at this point. We don't <laughs> promote <laughs> drugs at this <laughs> Yeah, we but don't promote drugs. If you happen to mix something into a tasty beverage and drink it, <laughs> that is perfectly fine. We got Mr. Leo Smith tuned in from the A. Atlanta is in the building. Listen, we got people all over the world that support this, that, that really like what we're doing, man. So we're going to keep it going. We got Miss uh, Musina Porter is tuned in. She is in the building. Miss Brittany B is tuned in. She is in the building. 
Hey, I appreciate everybody, man, that, that take time and come on here. Like I always say, man, we're going to give it right back to y'all. Give it right back. That's what this oily conduct does. How do you balance you know, being a, a full-time mom and being a full-time worker? Well, thank God I have a job that I do. Um, it's, you know, I work for the state, so, I mean, I pretty much work when he's at school. And, um, you know, of course, I have weekends off. So my thing is, um, pretty much, I mean, it's not too hard as far as the, you know, finding a babysitter because I don't mm -hmm. have to do that. I mean, the only issue I have is, uh, you know, I work in, I mean, I live in Bend so, and I work in Lua, so, of course, I have to be at work by the time we get to school, so I just use a daycare for transportation. Other than that, I mean, um, when he's out of school, I'm off, so that portion of it. Yeah. Do you feel like child support is a scam? I'm going to ask you as a mom. Do I think it's a scam? Do you feel like you wasted your time with child support? I don't. No? Okay. But let me put it like this. It all depends on the reason a person is on child support. Because, you know, some I, I've met a lot of men that are good dads that do for their kids. And they don't need the government trying to put their hand in their money. Because whatever the kid needs, they got that. But then you have some that won't do if you don't make them do pretty much. And it's like my case was, I tried to see, and I'm going to be real about this, because I have no reason to lie about nothing or whatever. whatever. We keep it real, 100. But when we were separated, that showed me what I could look forward to or not look forward to when we actually got divorced. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the proper help, so what I did was, of course, when we went through divorce, they put my child support. And I, and I left it as that because... It's like this. I feel like at the end of the day, if you're not going to do, I mean, you know, it's our right to let the system do it. And, you know, I mean, you know, some, like I said earlier, you know, people try to justify because they pay child support or you get your money, that's good enough. But my thing is, whenever you switch jobs, I mean, are you calling up there and ensuring we're getting the money? Or are we having to wait for months until the system catches back up? You know, and that's the difference. But then again, you have some people that put folks on child support because they're bitter. You know, and so, I mm -hmm. mean, it, it. to me, I'm for it, but I'm also against it. It just depends on the person. Mm -hmm. you know? Depending on how it's being used, because a lot of people, a lot of, I say people too, use it as a weapon yeah. instead of a tool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I understand... I understand feelings, man, but because you feel a certain way towards somebody, man, some people out here, like Melana said, bitter as fuck. Well, right. I'm sorry. I, you, <laughs> I messed it up. I smiled at you. I smiled at you. I was like, you broke it, but. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we did. We held on for how long, bro? We had 30 minutes. We had 30 minutes in there. We did. <laughs> It was building up inside of me. I was, was going to have get, a... When we get passionate, it just... You know, I understand. We I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. Man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there we go. Right. <laughs> See, we just, we just got to keep it moving. It's okay. Now I get cold for Christmas. Do you ever feel judged being a single parent? That's a good question. At first, I did. I, I did. I, I um... At the beginning of it, I did because, you know, when people don't know you or know your situation, they just judge from what they see. And when you're the only one that's there or you got to go to every appointment or go to the school functions or do this, you know, you wonder what people are thinking, you know. And at first I was like, yeah, people going to think I just was out here doing what I do and ended up with a kid and the dad ran off or something. But then I came to myself and I was like, you know what, we all have a story and we either tell it or we won't. And just because, you know, I ended up in the voice and you just pretty much see me with my son doesn't make me any less of a woman or a person. It's just life. And obviously God saw fit for me. He thought I was strong enough to carry the battle, so that's why I'm here. You know, and so, I mean, at this point, I, I don't. I, I feel like if you're going to judge me, you're going to judge me. If you're going to think that... I'm whatever, then that's that's your call, you know, and so it's kind of like a whatever, because as long as my son knows and my son can eventually one day say, hey, that's my mom, she did a good job, or, you know, I'm proud, you know, to call you my mother, that's all I want, you know, I don't care what everybody else says, Word. as long as my son knows, I'm good. Melinda in here with the gold BBS chain on. I've seen that, I've... 
It's money, Mitch, Milano, in the building. Uh, I thank you, first of all, for having on that good disorderly conduct entertainment shirt. First person to buy a shirt, by the way. Uh, you can be the second person. Um, just make sure you hit that inbox. I got a PayPal, a cash account, a bank account, uh, a He's business done. checking account. I got every account you need to give me some money. Uh, so if you're just trying to get one of these good old shirts, $20. Ah, right, got these hats, y'all. Good old hats for you. $20. I can get these to you. Ship them to you. They fresh. Got the Disorderly Conduct logo on the back. Got the, the microphone on the front. Uh, go ahead and put your order in for one of those. Black Friday deal. You can get one for 20 or two for 40 And that's the damn deal. You're not going to find that anywhere else, man. <laughs> You're not going to find that anywhere else. I'm telling you. Okay. Moana. Yes, Dating. Oh, Dating in 2017. Dating after you've gotten divorced. Mm-hmm. Let's be on that. <laughs> just about don't have the worst. Right. <laughs> um, it's not what it was back then. I can say that. Dating is a whole... It's difficult. And, and see, my thing is just being a single mom. You have to find someone. For number one, you're not just dating for yourself anymore. You're dating for right. your kids. So you have to ensure that the person you choose can be that positive influence around your child. And then number two, you you meet people that, you know, may not have children or, you know, may not be a completely single parent, so time can be an issue. So, you know, you have to find someone that can understand, like, hey, I can't just get up and go when you can't, you know. And, I mean, it's just so many pointers in trying to find the right person. You know, I mean, I've tried it. It's hard, but, I mean, it is what it is. I just refuse to settle for someone that's not good for my son or for me, you know, and I mean, like I say, you know, people are more, they're not, it's not about love and settling down and having a family anymore. I mean, that's the thing, like, but. Everybody want to lay up. Yeah, and I ain't trying to have no more kids, so. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me get to some of these comments, miss. I don't want to say your name wrong. Uh, yeah. I'm going to just read the comment. Because she wrote it. Oh, Ma'am. What's the last name? The Milano. <laughs> Don't do this right now. <laughs> Ma'am says, let's keep it 100. Most men that split from their kids' moms typically don't do the right thing financially. So the only alternative for the mom is to file for child support. I don't disagree with the sentiment on the, the base, like, of of a of, of baby dad not being in the child's life, paying the child support and, and not doing and right. not doing that. I get that. I understand that. I'm not disagreeing with y'all on that. Y'all are totally right to do what's necessary to make sure y'all are straight because as fathers I don't know how some of these dudes man go twenty four hours. Without seeing or talking or talking to their son. I can't imagine going that long without seeing or talking to my son. I don't care what me and Sam are going through. I can't imagine I'm talking to KJ for that long and not seeing him and not putting that time into my son because that's my seed. That's my son. Right. That's my firstborn. That's my baby that's boy. That's essentially you again. That is me. Yeah. That boy act just like me. Moody just like me. I, I, <laughs> there is no way for me to deny him and I would never deny my son. Oh, right. And it's not just denying him with words, it's denying him the, the opportunity to spend time with his father, the opportunity to, 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 to be around me, the opportunity to for me to be around him. I got a special son. I'm I'm proud to be this little dude's father. Right. This dude is so amazing. He is my motivation. He's the reason I started all of this, the reason I started losing weight. Getting myself together so I could be able to play with him, spend those moments and run around in the backyard with him, mm-hmm. uh, have two, three hours of sleep today and still be able to get up and do a podcast because it's something I love to do. I don't care. Like, right. you know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing that. So I don't understand, man, for me as a father up to how guys can go. Without seeing their 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 see the son the their daughters that 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 person that that's that ugh, I just don't get it. You come from a stepdad situation. 
Am I wrong? No, oh, I can't oh, my mouth. Okay. okay. I don't know. Let's touch on this. Yeah. I see this. <laughs> my mama just commented on this. Mama! <laughs> What's mama. going on? Mama, hey! My mama's in the <laughs> city. But she, she uh, told me she, told me me she don't like all the cursing hey. either, so I gotta chill out on that. I, I tried. I mama? You, you raised me better. We went 30 minutes without cussing. You should be proud. <laughs> and you know me. But, uh, yeah, I had a two parent household. Okay. I'm gonna tell you, matter of fact, I was, I had, I was lucky enough to have both of my parents. Like, I ain't gonna say things were always good. Of course, any relationship gonna always have their faults. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't even learn about how step parents and stuff worked until I got to high school because I, I was talking to one of my homegirls. She said, I told her something about what happened in my house. And she said, you stay with both your parents? Like, she was amazed. And I was like, yeah, you don't. I always thought either you had both your parents or your grandmother raised you. She said, no, I got, uh, you know, a stepfather or something like that. And I was like, oh, I never even put that kind of, you know what I'm saying, thought into it. But it's some sort of component, whether it's stepfather, like you said, some sort of authority figure to look up to, bro. It's, you got to have that in some way. I can't see how any man, especially something that you made, and I can feel it for women because y'all actually, men kind of just basically... You shoot stuff out and you can go on about your business. Right. Women got women, women got women got to carry carry this uh basically alien life form that feeds on whatever you do for nine months. It changes your mood. You become like a, a incubator for life. You feel what I'm saying, man? So I, if somebody ain't handling their business and you have to go through all that, man, y'all can't sleep at night. Heartburn, uh, <laughs> heartburn, your feet get swollen, your ankles. Look, if he ain't handling his business, do what you got to do. All I'm saying is I don't, don't be bitter when doing things like child support. I know it's some women that do that, and I believe you could do the same thing to women. I don't know, because I know it's some single fathers out there, too. So, I mean, it's on both sides of the aisle, man, but... Handle your business if you got them out here, y'all. Don't man. please don't be a sorry father, but like the, the little boy that robbed Burger King on uh, Andrea Lane, twelve years old, man. What? We didn't hear about, no. bruh. Twelve years old and walked into Burger King. It's people. I mean, this customer's in there, so they serving folks. Walked in there, they tried to drop a place, and it was like, you know what I'm saying? They laughed because it's a twelve, it's a twelve year old kid. Got to shooting up the place. Shooting at the workers and just shooting before he left. Wow. He left. The police came up there. He came back crying and turned himself in. Yeah. Now, you got to think, at what point, what went wrong to where that was a decision that was made for him? You know what I'm saying? Like, where was the, what, where was anybody to try and to curb that kind of. A 12-year-old? A 12-year-old, bro. And no matter how you cut it, he came back crying. They said he was in tears saying that he did that, man. So it had to either been. No authority to figure anything around, but he know he made a mistake, and that's going to be a mistake to go with him for the rest of his life, man. That one bad decision, because nobody told him, or nobody had another way to show him, and that's all he knew. And now his life is ruined. Ruined? That's, that's going to follow from 12 years old, and you in the system, bro. You don't get rid of that. Nothing like that, and you shot a gun. I guess so many variables. You feel what I'm saying, man? That's why I'm telling be in your kid's life. I know it's hard, uh, co-parenting or whatever y'all want to call it. I feel that. Ain't no excuse, though. Ain't no excuse. That's still an extension of you. Ain't That's no you excuse. out here, man. You put... I don't give a damn what you going through with baby mama hey. or, or whatever. You supposed to be Handle your business, kids, man. I don't really. care, like... You make sacrifices and you deal with that drama and you deal with it because that's... You signed up for that. That's what you signed up for. You you lay with that woman. Right. You slept with that woman. You made that baby. So I don't understand why you're not there taking care of the damn kid. It doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. It frustrates me as a father because I see this and I'm just... I I long for time to spend with my son because I work overnight. I don't get to see him or, or spend that time with him like he a daycare all day. I, I, I come home at night. I see him for maybe two or three hours. And then I'm going to work, headed out for the night. I don't see him until he getting up in the morning. Right. When I'm taking him to daycare or, or I'm picking him up from school in the evening. So sometimes I go 
all day, all night without seeing my kids. And that frustrates the hell out of me. That's why I'm doing this podcast. So maybe one day, I ain't got to work. Y'all <laughs> can buy these shirts and book. Uh, <laughs> and we just make it happen. But <laughs> if that's the point, that, that whole situation right there frustrates me just being a father, being a man, first of all, because I, I, I pride myself in... And being a father, being a man, holding my up my end of the bargain when it comes to that's my son. Right. It's not up just up to his mom to to do everything. And and as a man, he should want to just be there. He should want to be in this life, especially if you got daughters too. Especially if you especially got daughters. if you got daughters, man. The little y'all, girls, boy, man, y'all so proud man. not going out here and making sure your little girl's taken care of, boy. But that's a whole nother situation. We ain't gonna get into that. How do you explain to your child about his dad not being in his life? Or do you even, when he comes up to you and be like, Mama, where's dad? Um, How do you explain it? it it's, it's hard because, because I love my kid, I kind of lie. Because my thing is, regardless of what me and his dad has going on or whatever, it's never his fault. And so, you know, I don't go and say, oh, he's this or he ain't that or try to make him sound bad to his son because his son may not understand what's going on, but I just try to, either I tell him he's at work or he's at home. I make up some little sap story to make it sound good. Right. Because he doesn't really understand the full story anyway. And my thing is this. For any parent, you never have to bash a parent that's absent. You know, my thing is this, like, eventually my son is going to be able to see for himself what's going on and choose whatever. He may say, hey, go find him and call him or whatever, you know, but that would be his choice to deal with him or not. That's nothing that I will be able to stop if that's what he chooses to pursue, you know. And and my, that's what I'm trying to salvage right now is that I don't want him, you know, even though I don't agree with what's going on, I don't want to like influence my son's decision about his father. Right. I want him to choose whatever he thinks about him for himself. You know, and that's why it's important for me to just try to keep it, you know, surface right now. At least until he can understand because at the end of the day he doesn't really know. He just knows he was there and now he's not. And so at one point he was going over there. And so, you know, he knew he could go over there and now he can't. So it's kind of like you know, all he knows is, well, where is he at, mom? Right. I miss him. You know, I want to see him. And then I'm looking like, what am I What am I supposed to say? You know, but again, I just, I don't believe in making any, because I went through it myself. Right. And, you know, my thing was, I decided for myself whether I wanted to do with my parents or not. I didn't have either parent, you know, and, but that was a decision I made later in life, you know. And, you know, I guess it's just, about making things sound good. I know it's not good to lie or anything, but I feel like if I'm protecting him, both of their images in a sense, then right. that's what I do. Right. You know? Got some comments popping up. Miss Rachel Goff says, your child will always come first. If the man doesn't want to be there, then there is nothing you can do to change their mind. You just have to pray you find someone that cares enough to step into that world. Mom says, good job, 33 years of marriage. Man, hold Shout it out to 33 years of marriage. Hold it down. <laughs> Shout out to you for not allowing your circumstances to render you your powerless. That's from Mr. Shelly Gordonberry. Uh, Ms. Malama, right on. That's what he says. Uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. If you're liking what you're seeing and what you're hearing right now, I need to see some hearts. I need to see some smiley faces. I need to see some thumbs up. Uh, we are live right now. We just have Miss Ashley Morris jump in live. Hey, I shout you out as soon as you come in because you show love. So hey, there we, we go. Show love. There we go. There, there we, we go. go. We're talking about hey, those likes and hearts they mean it. I don't care if it's an angry face. You can be mad at what we talking about. <laughs> Long as you come in because we need the Facebook algorithm. We need the rhythm. We need those rhythms. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. Let me see what. What else do we got? Let me let's, let let me hop off you line for a second. We're gonna get back into you. We got a little bit of time left. Got a little bit of time left. I got I'm I'm trying to come up with a name for this. I got this segment. 
that I came up with in my head. Y'all can't steal it. I copyrighted it and all of that. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> Where we pull screenshots from po posts that we see on Facebook of people, what they say. We don't say their names. We just say <laughs> we just say this. We just we just say the screenshot. Okay. So I got one. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find it. It was on my snap. So I'm not sure if it's still there. Um, hold on, just a second. Bear with me. Bear with us. We get it together, y'all. We live. I'm, 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 okay. There we go. Here is one. It says you cannot. First screenshot. We're gonna name it. I'm gonna have a name for it. All the rest of the land. You cannot give a woman everything she needs. If God himself gave them eyebrows, they shave it and they draw their own. God gave them nails, they cut it off, fix their own. God gave them hair. Uh they they uh hold on, I, I, yeah, they cut it off and they fix their own. He gave them breasts. They repackage it to what they want. God still gave them buttocks. They arrange it to the size they want. If even God can't satisfy them, then who are you to think that you can please them? My brother, don't kill yourself. Um, Malone Marie. <laughs> How do you feel about that statement right now? <laughs> you see, you're a woman. I want to get your opinion first. I don't know if I agree with all that. Okay, well, tell me what you did. Because I put it out there. I put it in. I, 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 people think that I have this, this judgment about me, but no, I'm... I'll be putting stuff out there to see what other people think. So I'm interested to see. Let's just make like this simple. Okay. There's no perfect person in this world. But I firmly believe that there's somebody that's perfect for me. Just like there's someone perfect for you. And I believe that. You know, I may not like this or I may like that. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to find that right person that fits your wants and your needs and all of that. So I mean, all that other stuff. No. No, no, no. So what you gonna do? Go ahead, go ahead, audio. We're gonna come right back. Hey, I don't, I don't care about <laughs> but yeah, man, uh that's a that's a weird a weird post. Okay, that's not right Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's what we I got you. I got you. I'm gonna let DJ my audio man. We got we got some issues, y'all. Hey man, it happens live. Stuff happens. Stuff it goes happens on. Live. This is part of the podcast. But yeah, man, I don't. We I mean, had worse situations. <laughs> <laughs> People be saying stuff for attention. I feel like that was an attention grabbing post, man. Because I mean, true, I agree. I feel like at any point in history, man, you can look at man. But are women really happy with themselves, though? I think the sentiment is, for me, what I got from that post is, are you really happy with yourself before you even come to a man about being what he needs to be with himself? Like, are you requiring the same amount of, I guess, attention to detail to your life and to your situation that... Like, a lot of women I see say they want a real man uh, and all of that. I'm not going to say a lot of women. I'm going to say some women that I see on Facebook say they want a real man and all of this and all that good stuff. The next picture you see, they got their ass posted up, uh, tooted up, um, in the bathroom with the selfie. Um, you've seen it. I see it a lot. I see it a lot. And it's a lot. <laughs> and I feel like now those... We letting social media dictate how we... Determine who's worthy enough for us to date. Most definitely, I, we did. We did a whole podcast about this called "Death to Relationship Goals" because I'm 27 years old, man. There is nothing that an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old can teach me about relationship goals. I didn't been through the highs. I didn't been through the lows. <laughs> Ain't nothing. No, nothing. I'm just, like, there's nothing I can learn right. from from them. All this, like we said, all this lovey dovey. We always laid up, um, cuddling all the time, uh, in um, those uncomfortable, uncomfortable positions. It's hot, you all. Know. I wish this was me and Bay. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I wish this was us. This is us. You're like, putting like, oh, put my back. Well, my God. Hold on. That, that's not even realistic. Like, I wish people would quit thinking that a relationship is all just happy, go lucky. We uh best friends. Uh, we hold hands. 
And we just celebrate <laughs> life together. Matching shirts Boy, and everything. Hell no. <laughs> it is not like that. It is some work. You have to put in work in your relationship just like you do on the job. It is You cannot get married and start slacking off in a relationship. You cannot get with a woman and expect her to be all of this and you ain't all of that. You cannot get with a man and expect him to be all of this and you ain't yeah, all of that. All that. Man. You want this man to be this, this, and this. Meanwhile, you don't even know your damn credit score. <laughs> Come on. Crazy. You don't even know your credit score, but you, you heard know people stealing. You you want, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> they require a lot from us in 2017. But are they setting the expectation on for themselves when it comes to what I want for 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 me and myself when I get into a relationship? Are you letting that man know from jump, hey, this is what I want, this is my expectation, or are you just going to let life pass y'all by where y'all laying up having sex every day and eating, snacks. and eating snacks, and that's just it, getting fat. <laughs> Gaining pounds. For real, because that's what happens. Oh, really? That's what happens. I also feel like, man, a lot of people, like you said, social media is not only ruining ruin relationships, it's ruining expectations, because people do a lot of things to look good for social media. And be unhappy. unhappy. The most unhappy couple you have ever seen. I done, I done synced it. I done synced, synced it. it, man. I'm telling you, like, them likes and shares be addicted. Every time I see that little red thing pop up on Facebook, up oh, somebody done said it. like my stuff. Look, but they make it look good for the camera. It's, it's like reality TV. Mm -hmm. It's real in the sense that it's happening. But the feelings and everything that's into it, all that is fabricated, man. There's a lot of people that just out here for show and not to grow. You feel what I'm saying? It's it's a slippery slope, y'all. Find you somebody out here that's for you and not because y'all look good on Facebook and you get a thousand likes and shares and stuff like that, man. Because y'all going to be the most shared, unhappiest couple on Facebook, man. And it, we got Miss Heidi Alvaro tuned in, Mr. Brandon Brimley, Brian Brimley, both tuned in. I appreciate the Brimley brothers, both of them are tuned in tonight. Those brothers can cook their tails off. Um, if you ever want some good food or a good catering service, make sure you look up the Brimley brothers, especially my guy, Brian. He's the chef, man. My man be cooking up some good, good stuff. I give shout outs to everybody that, that, that gives shout outs to me. Shout out to my man, Gensu. The spoken word yeah. artist, man, who be, who be sharing and liking everything. Uh, got a podcast coming out, uh, not another podcast, with with him and a couple of his his homies. I'm really looking forward to everything that they're doing, man. They got Arkansas, the podcast, and it's taking over. Uh, everybody is really seeing it now like it's something, like it's something. Right. It's not nothing that we just play around with. This is work right now. <laughs> this is work. I put, For real. Put dedication, time, effort, energy. My man put his time, effort, energy, and money and everything into this. So when I tell y'all, we need y'all support. <laughs> we need it. Donate to that PayPal. Donate to that cash app. Are we accepting Bitcoin yet? We accept Bitcoin, silver, gold. Uh, <laughs> whatever you can afford to give. We will accept that payment. Um, I'm going to make it to where cryptocurrency <laughs> can be. We got it all. Right. And an and established form of payment for us. Um, Let me see. How much time you got? You can stay? You, you good? Okay, let's keep on going. Yeah, let's keep on going. I got <laughs> Kid free for the weekend. Shout out to the kid free parents out there for the weekend. We out man, that's like a, that's like a <laughs> holiday we out here. Turn real, up. Man. Turn up. <laughs> What are your hopes for you and Mr. Corbin's future? My hopes for him is just, I mean, my main thing is just giving him a life that I never had. And, you know, even, you know, with the whole child support and all that, my main focus at this point is getting to where I can solely do everything alone. That way, if something happens or it gets cut off, I'm still being able to provide that life for my son. And I'm going to say this, my, my main most young people don't think like this, but I'm a financial person. And, you know, again, I don't come from anything, so my goal is to give my family more than I hit. So two things that I desire to do by the time he graduates is to give him a deed to a house and a title to a car, mm. you know. Mm. And that's what I'm working on. Like, I'm halfway there. You know, I got an extra house now. 
And by then, I'll flip over here. You know, but I'm I'm saying, you know, you want to, you know, a lot of people don't think, well, you know, things happen in life. You know, if something was to happen to me right now, who would take care of my son? Yeah. What could I leave him to ensure that he's okay? You know, and I, I'm a thinker, you know, and so I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, my career is locked in, my savings is good, you know, that, that way whatever happens, we are prepared for it, you know, and so my thing That's is, again, real. you know, just making sure that I continue to excel in life that way I can. And I, and I can show him that, you know, my thing is this, Corbin is a little spoiled, I ain't gonna say he's not, but he's a good spoiled, you know what I'm saying, he... I, I pay him for things like he might, you know, clean his little room, his raggedy cleaning, cleaning. But <laughs> I may pay him a dollar or two, you know, because I want right, to show right. him that hey, you know, regardless of what we have, you gotta work for it. Like I still want to be able to hand him over things, but I want to teach him that nothing is given to you free. You know, you have to work for what you have, and and I mean I know that, you know, and that's why I do what I do because I know at the end of the day, ain't nobody gonna take care of us, you know, so. Teach him the value of a dollar. You're doing dollar. exactly right. And right? also working. It's working. That's owning. Huge. Yeah. Teach him about owning. Owning a business. Get you an LLC for that house flipping that you're doing. Because when you leave, even if it's just something, he'll have something like a business that he can have. It. Because you want to work with believe you, you a house flipper now. You over here got I'm moving. Yeah, I'm but hey, I'm once you, man, you... Once you get this one house done, you done already learned the ups and downs, how to price, how to barter, how to get stuff done and manage with a budget. You doing it. Yeah. Hey, and that's the, that's you are like, doing it. If, if I can say anything tonight, it would be to encourage people. It don't matter how much money you got or where you got coming in or where you come from. Anything is possible because... I'm a single person, you know, raising a kid by myself. I don't make the most money in the world, but I've been able to, like, even with this house, like, you know, I, I haven't been able to just get it done the way I wanted to, but I'm, I'm making progress. You know, I got the roof done, and now I'm working on job, all that. But it's, my thing is, if you really, really want something, never let life stop that. You know, my life is not how I imagined it to be, but it's not that bad, you know, and my thing is you, you you move and you swift through life as balls are thrown. And, you know, I mean, again, single or not, you can do it. Don't let a divorce be your excuse. Don't let an absent parent be your excuse. Don't let money be the excuse. Because some of the richest people in the world are broke. Man. Because people will make all this money, but then they increase the cost of living. And so what sense does it make? to make more money if you don't know how to manage the money in the first place. So the money you make isn't really the issue. It's how you manage it. Because you can make, a person can make 100000 and you make 30000 but you got more to show than the 100000 person does because you know what you're doing. So don't let none of that detour you from what, if you got goals and dreams, accomplish them. You know, show your child that regardless of what life has done, hey, you know, that's my thing is I want to show my son that it's possible. No right. matter what happens. That's a great uh that's a great mindset to have, man. Like it's it's not about how much you got, it's how what you do with it. Yeah. And uh I learned that back when uh I always been watching the news and stuff and just know stuff. You remember when back in like two thousand one everyone crashed and then the you know the recession hit about two thousand eight, all them rich folks that had money and always had money started going broke, killing their whole family. Kill themselves, mm -hmm. bro. Losing their mind. Because you have money don't make a man. It's an old school song called Money Don't Make a Man. If you don't know what you're doing with that change, you might as well be broke. Uh, Trick Daddy was on one of the black interviews and said, if, if, you, if I can walk into your closet and look in your garage and see more money in them two things than in your bank account, you a poor fool. So if you, mm. look, credit... Savings, chickens, things like that matter. Jordans and stuff are cool. I wear new balances. Hold on. <laughs> if you can afford a hundred fifty dollars in Jordans, you can afford to get your kids some life insurance. I'm just saying. If you can spend that money on some Jordans, life insurance. Spend that money on getting your. I promise, man. It's 
you feel a lot better knowing that if something happened to you, your they kids is going to be care. okay. Right. And just being able to have life insurance, it really do take, like, a, a, I guess a little bit of stress off your shoulders. Like, okay, if something happened to me, I know my kids, my family, they going to be all right. Everything going to be straight. So I don't really have that worry. But if you out here wasting your money, wasting all that to buy him Jordans and buy him stuff that's not going to... Give him no return on his money. Get some life insurance, man. Because you never know. Never know. What can happen to you. And then something happened to you. And then you got your family on GoFundMe begging for some funeral money. Wearing Jordans. What are we doing that at? Come on now. <laughs> I'm like, let's change. Let's 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 be smarter about our situation and what we got going on. Especially when you got kids. And multiple kids. <laughs> That's for real. Um, really? Harlem, let's get into your health tip, brother. Harlem's health tip. Health tip of the week. For the week. Uh, listen here. I got two health tips. <laughs> My first one is the bigger the real health tip. <laughs> and I'm learning this myself. Uh, it's about to be a new year, y'all. know a lot of y'all got them weight goals on your mind. Summer 2018 coming up. You trying to thaw it out on the beach? I know, because I'm trying to do the same thing. Six pack is coming. I'm taking a shirt off at the apartment complex. Section A apartment complex. I'm coming for you. I'm out there. <laughs> Borat swing shot. I'm coming down. So <laughs> I'm out there. I'm out there. But hey, for real, uh, I know a lot of us are programmed. When you want to lose weight, the first thing you think is, I need to cut out what I'm eating. I need to cut meals. I need to stop eating less. Wrong. You need to eat more, baby. And what I mean by eating more is not eating big meals throughout the day. Eat several small meals. Look, breakfast. Mm. Snack, lunch, snack, dinner. That's five meals. You will be good. If you ever feel hungry throughout the day and you want to die, you're doing it wrong. It's going to be harder for you to lose weight because every time you're eating something, your body going to hold on to that plus whatever you got stored. So it's hard to lose. Like I said, I know I'm still, it's the holidays, baby. I ain't been on my diet like I'm supposed to, but I've been going to the gym. There's too many good snacks around. There's all type of cookies. They got good Christmas cookies. I see you. I see you posting them. Uh, <laughs> It's a struggle. I don't know where you're going. It's a struggle, bro. I'll be having a flip a table and break another chair on the Facebook post. I'm like, I'm going to flip the table and break a chair. I'll be excited. I'll be having breaking food moves. But for real, man, uh, never, if you're on the diet, never feel hungry. You're doing it wrong, man. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of y'all, is is it's hard work to change over your diet, especially when you're used to eating whatever you want to and eating whatever you want to, whenever you want to. Several small meals throughout the day, you'll be all right, baby. And uh, eat your colors, fruits, vegetables, man. Almonds are real good. Blue Diamond makes some great almonds. Get the sweet uh, chili Thai kind or the smokehouse barbecue kind. They're real good for you. You got all that protein. Get your muscles going. You'll be yeah. good, baby. Yeah. And uh, Christmas coming up, <laughs> I'm about to eat all types of pie <laughs> and cake. So take that tip with you. I'll be back in the gym on Tuesday. <laughs> and that was Harlem's health tip of the week. We bringing these segments to y'all. I'm bringing them to you. I promise you we're going to get them together, man. I'm, 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 I'm very proud of what we're doing, man, making it happen. Um, Really? You were great. <laughs> you are amazing. Um, I don't know what you was nervous about. Uh, you did your thing, really. I'm... I'm just proud to be the first one to be able to, you know, I guess, give you a platform to be open about how you feel. And that's all I ever wanted for you because I know you're trying to do something. And when I see people that's trying to do something, um, I make it happen. Okay, I'm just making sure you're recording. I mean, yeah, we good. We I mean, good. Yeah, okay. we should be. Okay. <laughs> that threw me off for a second. I didn't see no green or red lights coming up, but... I really do thank you for coming through and dedicating your time like I told you. I thank you, yeah. my brother, for coming through on another classic episode of Disorderly Conduct. Listen, before we get up out of here, I always got to leave you with that, that, that man listen moment. Um, if you're a father, man, I don't care what situation you're putting yourself in when it comes to dealing with your child and dealing with the mother um you just got to take the l and and be a man about the situation um the truth is 
like I said earlier, you made the decision to be with that woman, lay down with that woman, um, and do all of that with that woman. So the responsibility is on your shoulders to make sure your son and your daughter is successful in this world. Um, we as black men especially have to do extremely better with taking care of our kids, making sure we are present in our, our child's lives. Um, I never want my son to feel like his father was never present or never involved. That's why I changed who I was and changed the, the man that I that I was to, to be in his life, to sacrifice my needs and my wants, to be a healthier father, to be a healthier man, to be the best man that I could be, and be involved in my son's life, not just financially, but emotionally and, and all of that. Y'all got something y'all want to say before we get up out of this? Uh, other than... Then the jewels this man and this lady has dropped. It's been a good episode. Great episode, man. Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. Spend time with your family. <laughs> eat all the cake. Eat all the pie. Just go back to the gym on Tuesday when they open back up, y'all. But uh, for real, it's been another good Friday night. Is it still raining? I believe it's still. I, I ain't heard nothing. I hope it ain't raining, though. Lord, let the rain stop. I'm sick of it. Arkansas cannot drive in the rain. I done seen so many wrecks today. Look, take your time out there, y'all. Stop speeding. Right. Creep slowly in the rain. This is this only conduct, baby. We building. We building. We out. <laughs>